A true tale of home improvement unfolds next as an architect, a carpenter and a plumber assess the state of this old house. Every day is a gardening extravaganza right here on TLC. Learn how to grow with Joe Maiden and keep up to date with Gardener's Diary. It's the best way to a beautiful garden. I wish to make you all exceedingly jealous now. This is my garden. Everything for the seasoned gardener and the uninitiated. Gardening tips tomorrow at 9.30 on TLC. Bon appétit, but the food is incredible. So slow down and enjoy it. Welcome to my old-fashioned chicken dinner. Take Julia Child, America's answer to Delia Smith. Trouble trying to show everything, there's never quite enough time. Let me give you a dish that you'll, uh, I know no one else would give you this sort of thing, but I want you to try it. Then, add a taste of Jeff Smith. Enjoy yourself, the world is here for our taking. Then round off with Martin Yan, the man who can. The curtain's going up, bring on the show stoppers. All these add up to a tasty dish of home cooking from over there. Grab a slice of American pie tomorrow from midday, only on TLC. Everyone's favorite ingredient. On TLC now, Bob Vila is your guide to the restoration of this old house. You know, this is a classic Yankee farm. It's been here for 200 years, and they never threw anything out. So I can't wait to get into that barn and take a close look at what's in there. Old farm implements and stuff. But at some other point. Right now, let's meet with Bill Dromgool, our homeowner. Hi, Bill. Good morning, Bob. How are you? Good. What are you up to? We're moving. No kidding. Yeah, as you know, we have a six-month-old daughter, and we're very concerned about all the dust and everything that a construction project would raise. I think you're wise, but where are you going to move to? We were very lucky. We found a house to rent right here in the neighborhood, and we'll be able to come to the site every day. Fabulous. So we'll also be able to do all the work in there without having to worry about your, your belongings. Right. And there'll be no lead. There's lead paint in there and asbestos, and I don't want yeah. anybody exposed to that. Yeah. Now, you had to move real quickly when you found this house, didn't you? Yes, we did. That yeah. was our commitment, to move quickly. To, you didn't have a chance to have a professional house inspector come no. through? No, we didn't. Ordinarily, we would have because it's the best thing to do, but sure. in this case, we couldn't do it. We had to buy it on intu intuition. But what about termites and pests? Did you have an inspection done for that? Yes, we did. Yeah. There's a slight problem, but it's not significant. A 200-year-old house. Well, yeah. I think you're going to be in luck today, because Norm Abram, our carpenter, is just pulling up your driveway. Oh, and, great. And uh, he's had a lot of experience looking at old New England structures. Hi, Norm. Wonderful. Hi, Bob. How are you? Good. What do you think of this place? This is quite the place. Yeah? How old is it? 1785. Great. Meet Bill Drongold, the, home, the, the new owner. Hi, Good morning. Paul. Nice to meet you. Hey, why don't we get started and show Norm the exterior of the place. Great. Let's, let's, let's take a look over here at this little porch, Norm. Well, one thing that seems uh, clear to me is that the family who owned this house did some pretty ingenious things to save some money and, and maintain the house. The same family owned it for 200 years. Is that right? Well, that's probably why. I mean, I can see things right off. We've got this little porch here, and... Uh, if I look underneath it, there's still original joists and a couple little patches and splices down there. But look at here, they just put a two-by-four to keep it from falling down. Yeah. Because it's a job. It's an oddball porch. It used to be a whole porch, and then they, at some point, built a mudroom here. We've had some problems, Norm, with this bulkhead in the water. Well, I can see why. You know, this is the uh, old wooden bulkhead doors, and uh, these are not original. They've probably been replaced several times. Yeah. And when it rains, the water can run right in through these joints and even between the boards, so mm -hmm. I'm sure you get quite a bit of water right in the basement. Yeah. Look, Look at this. There. This, this yeah. is a great example of the type of repairs. A piece of wood to patch probably a rotted stringer rather than replace the whole thing. Yeah. Put some new treads on it. But Norm, they mitered the corner. Well, they took some time yeah. to do the job, you know, what they properly. Yeah. Norm, what about overhead here? We were thinking about caulking that, maybe nailing it back. Right up over here? Yes. Well, you've got a problem. Uh, there's a problem, first of all, with the roof. It's probably leaking, and that's why it started to open up. The ice gets in there and forces it open. And it's gone on for so long that it started to rot. So the only way to fix it is to solve the roof problem, 
and then replace all these moldings and soffit boards. Will we be able to duplicate that molding? Uh, in this case, we can get that molding pretty easily. That's just a standard crown molding. Great. But the brackets are in good shape, and yeah. they're important. That's right. What do you suppose that chicken wire is doing on, uh, in front of the transfer? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was probably, uh, they had problems with birds making a nest right here because it's a shaded area, nice yeah. and cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the door's original to that entrance. Look at the notches up on the corners. No, this is uh, actually, if you look at the inside, this is a relatively new door. Yeah. And they just notched it to fit around the corners. They probably bought it secondhand or brought it from someplace else. Yeah. And uh, what's, what do you suppose this is for, Bob? I think they used to leave messages there for the mailman and little, delivery people. A little uh -huh. clothespin. Great yeah. idea. Come on around this side. Let's take a closer look. See any problems right offhand? Well, for one thing, a lot of old houses, uh, we have problems with foundations, and from the outside anyway, we see that we've got a good solid foundation. Granite, right? The granite right here above grade. And the grade is low enough that we probably don't have any problems right here with any insect damage in the sills. Mm -hmm. and, but look at this. Yeah, what do you suppose that's so? <laughs> well, this is an old uh, pipe that leads to some kind of a drain, and more than likely it doesn't work because it's clogged up with silt and everything. Yeah, but this and was a fancy house. It did have conductor pipes to take all the rainwater from the roof away from the house into a drain that's field. Right. And that's one of the keys to having good solid structure is to keep that water away. And they went through a lot of trouble, look, even taking shingles and wire to wrap it around the pipe and a piece of flashing to direct the water in there to keep it working. Oddball approach, but it'll, it can still be put back together that's in working right. order. What about, I think that all the clapboards on this house are original. We've, we've been looking at them closely. What do you think? I think so, too, because if you look closely at where they're joined, they're scythed, mm -hmm. which means they're cut at a very sharp angle so that they overlap one another rather yeah. than just the butt joint. Uh -huh. can, they, can they be saved, Philip? Well, I think in any case, we want to save as much of the siding as possible. Yes. Where it's good, scrape off the paint and repaint it with a clapboards are seriously damaged or split, we can replace those. Yeah. And I think it's really the only facade that has a lot of the, the original 1785 mm -hmm. uh, uh, siding on it. Nice little bay window there. Yeah. Now look at this, the money facade, the front facade. What do you say? Wow, it's in great condition. The west side of the house doesn't get all that heavy weather, mm -hmm. and the siding is in good condition, although the porch... What's caused these problems? Well, you can see... Everything is just rotted away, and there's probably insect damage. Now, it looks like they did a good job originally when this was installed. There's, it's sitting on stones, and there's stones around the perimeter, which means they provided some good drainage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But over the years, with uh, leaves and grass, everything starts to build up and build up around it so that the, the soil, when it rains, it just gets saturated, and that mm -hmm. water just gets sucked up by the wood, and then it just rots away. So yeah. Plus to, age and wear, you that's know. Right. It does wear out occasionally. That can all be replaced. That with can be replaced, and fur. today we've got treated lumbers which can survive in an environment that is close to the ground. For the we'll, structure. Right. We'll be able to save the roof. Uh, definitely. We'll save the, the roof, shore it up, and remove this and, and rebuild a new porch. But we've got to do a lot of work up on the eaves here. You can see right there the gutter. It's open a quarter of an inch. And it's sort of the same situation we had around the corner. Water damage. Ice damming and water forces everything apart. Besides the fact that the porch settled because it's rotting, starts to pull open the joints. Mm. And, you know, the theory today is to do things in as few joints as possible. So when we replace this gutter, we want to try to get like a 40-foot piece of gutter so that mm -hmm. there's only one joint. Same thing goes for like moldings and fascia boards. Look at here. We've got a three-foot piece of molding a three-foot piece of molding, then they got maybe an eight-footer, and then a little six-inch piece. Sure. What's Water. that molding called, Norm? That's a bed molding. Yeah. And, you know, the things came short back then because it was difficult to get lumber in very long lengths. So mm -hmm. today we want to do it with long pieces. Fewer joints. And I assume we're going to save these... Uh, are we going to save these columns? Oh, absolutely, oh. yeah. They're in pretty good shape. It's just the bottoms that have to be uh, repaired a little bit. Okay. Let's take a look around here. Now, this is the north side of the house. Over here on the north side, Norm, the clapboards seem to be in pretty good shape. We noticed from the cellar that part of the sill in this corner had been replaced. Along that side. Now, it Up looks, to about here, right? Yes. Yeah, it looks like they should have continued with the replacement of the sill because this water table is all rotten out. It's about half thickness. Actually, it's ready to fall off here. And, uh, oh boy, the boards are all rotten. 
What a and disaster. about half of the sill looks like it's gone, although I don't see any active uh, insects in here. What caused all this damage? Well, probably the problem was, like, on the other side, you had about a foot of distance between the wood and the grade. And here, oh. we're up to, well, we were up to within about two or three inches. Yeah. And being the north side, I imagine that the uh, snow would pile up against You're you. You're absolutely right. When we saw it, we had snow up to the windowsill. It seemed like it would never melt. Yeah, but when it did melt, it probably saturated this wood, and there probably was some insects in there, and it just rotted away. Yeah. If we look at this corner board, it's all loose, and the boards look pretty loose and rotten. Really? Do really? <laughs> you think there's, there's going to be replacement needs yeah. in there? But if you look way up at the top, you can see that yeah. the board has opened up, and the water is probably getting in there and just filtering right down through this wall. You know, I wish you'd get up there and take a look on, on, on the L section of it. I was checking it out from the inside the other day. There is a little cubbyhole door that you can get in underneath. Really? And you know what we found? About a half dozen old containers, old crocs, old tin pans, anything you can think of stuck under there that kicks the rainwater that kept leaking in. Oh, so they've they got, got some, they've got some serious problems. Well, what they've done, it looks like they figured that they had these leaks, so they put some tar paper over whatever other roofing surface was here and then just put hot tar over it. Yeah. And up here where it meets the house, they've got a board here, and there's probably a metal flashing which has deteriorated over the years, and they just filled it with this tar, hoping that it would not leak, but I think it still is because that doesn't last very long. Yeah, and look behind you. Isn't that the oddest gutter you've ever seen? Well, we've got a problem with water here, and they nail the board on the front of this gutter. Oh, is that it? That's that wasn't the right of, thing to do? They took a piece of clapboard, hoping that they could slow down some of the water coming off the roof. But by doing that, when it freezes up in the wintertime, it raises the water level up and actually makes it easier for water to force its way into the eaves. And that's why we have a lot of this damage and the damage down on the corner. Is that what they call an ice dam? That's right. <laughs> Very yeah. typical for New England. Come on down here, Norm. I want you to see the, the, the L back here. Now, this building back here seems to have been added on. What do you suppose it was used, used for, Bill? It was unheated space, and we found kindling and wood there for the wood-burning stove, some small tools. And apparently, they might have brought a car in there one time. Mm -hmm. What characters. do you think? Well, by being uh, an additional building for storage, probably, it's, you know, it's strong enough to serve its purpose, but it's not like a... But it's super lightly strength. built. That's yeah, right, very yeah. lightly built. It's got a few problems over here related, I suppose, to the use that this end of it had. What right? is this, anyway? This was a privy, a three-hole privy. Oh, great. Well, we'll... Uh... Long, long time ago. <laughs> It's all rotted away. Look at that up there. That's the ventilation shaft for the privy room. Isn't that neat? Hey, that's Keep great. fresh air. Let's in go there. around the other side and I'll show you the inside. Well, Bill, this is a great piece of property. Thank I you. really envy you. I, especially about this barn. I could use a place like that for a storage area and a nice workshop. After what you showed me this morning, I wonder if I should consider <laughs> selling it. The whole place. Yeah, I don't know. It's a nice place. Hey, getting back to this little back alley. Notice how it's really just uh, sitting on a pile of rocks. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. We were looking at this door, and it's probably salvaged from one of the real early buildings around here. And I mean, we're talking old stuff here. Yeah, boards just right on grade, and yeah. of course the foundation being that it's just dry stones with no mortar, it caves in after a while. They even put some wire here to stop mm -hmm. the animals. Keep the raccoons out. Yeah, yeah. Got a family. Right? And you can tell that the structure itself, uh, well, it wasn't originally here as this shed. It was mm -hmm. originally something else, part of another building, most likely. Look at all this. It's a nice post and beam construction, though. You know, they've got good-sized posts and, and good-sized ties across there. What do you plan to use this for? You know, Norm, it's a lot of space, and we'd like to use it somehow. We were thinking of a family room or a family room with a kitchen. What do you well, think? Would it work? Well, you're going to have some problems. First of all, if you look up at the roof, even though we've got nice big beams in here, the roof structure itself is, is way under the code requirements for today. Mm -hmm. And this floor, you know, you really don't have a floor. It slopes about a foot. It could be done but it would be a major project.
This is a request from the RSPCA asking you to choose a credit card that means Bank of Scotland makes a cash donation to the RSPCA every time you use it, at no cost to you. Call now on 0800 210 and we'll send you the facts. The RSPCA card charges you no annual fee for the first year, and if you use it regularly you may never need to pay a fee.